All right, let's check out this post from Blizzard. From Mr. Adam. Diablo 2 Resurrected Outages, an explanation how we've been working on it and how we're moving forward. Hello everyone, since the launch of Diablo 2 Resurrected, we have been experiencing multiple server issues and we wanted to provide some transparency around what is causing these issues and the steps that we've taken so far to address them. We also want to give you some insight into how we're moving forward. Too long did not read. Our server outages have not, have not been caused by a singular issue. We are solving each problem as they arise with both mitigating, with both mitigating, so, okay. Let me try this sentence again. Too long did not read, our server outages have not been caused by a singular issue. We are solving each problem as they arise with both mitigating, Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. With both mitigating solves and longer term architectural changes. A small number of players have experienced character progression loss moving forward. Any loss due to a server crash should be limited to several minutes. This is not a complete solve to us and we are continuing to work on this issue. Our team with the helps of others at Blizzard are working to bring the game experience to a place that feels good for everyone. We're going to get a little bit into the weeds here with some of the engineering specifics, but we hope that this overall, we hope that overall this helps you understand why these outages have been occurring and what we've been doing to address each instance, as well as how we're investigating the overall root cause. Let's start at the beginning. The problems with the servers. Before we talk about the problems, we'll briefly give you some context as to how our server databases work. First, there's our global database, which exists as the single source of truth for all of your character information and progress. As you can imagine, that's a big task for one database and wouldn't cope on its own. So to alleviate load and the latency on our global database, each region, NA, EU, and Asia, has individual databases that also store your character's information and progress. And your region's database will periodically write the global one. Most of your in-game actions are performed against these regional databases because it's faster and because your character is locked there to maintain the individual character recording integrity. The global database also has backup in case the main fails. With that in mind, to explain what's been going on, we'll be focusing on the downtimes experienced between Saturday, October 9th until now. On Saturday morning, Pacific time, we suffered a global outage due to sudden significant surge in traffic. This was a new threshold that our servers had not experienced at all, not even at launch. This was exacerbated by an update we had rolled out the previous day intended to enhance performance around game creation. These two factors combined overloaded our global database, causing it to time out. We decided to roll back that Friday update we'd previously de deployed, hoping that this would ease the load on the servers leading into Sunday, while also giving us the space to investigate deeper into the root cause. On Sunday, though, it became clear what we'd done on Saturday wasn't enough. We saw an even higher increase in traffic, causing us to hit another outage. Our game servers were observing the disconnect from the database and immediately attempted to reconnect, repeatedly, which meant the database never had time to catch up on the work we had completed because it was too busy handling a continuous stream of connection attempts by game servers. During this time, we also saw we could make conf configuration improvements to our database event logging, which is necessary to restore a healthy state in case of database failure. So we completed those and undertook further root cause analysis. The double-edged sword of Sunday's outage was that because we dealt with because of what we dealt with on Saturday, we created what was essentially a playbook on how to recover from it quickly, which was good. But because we came online so quickly in a peak window of player activity with hundreds of thousands of games within 10 minutes, we fell over again, which was bad. 
So we had many fixes to deploy, including configuration and code improvements, which we deployed onto the backup global database. This leads us into Monday, October 11th, when we made the switch between the global databases. This led to another outage when our backup database was erroneously continuing to run its backup process, meaning that it had spent most of its time trying to copy from the other database when it should have been servicing requests from servers. During this time, we discovered further issues. We made further improvements. We found a since deprecated but taxing query we could eliminate entirely from the database. We optimized eligibility checks for players when they join a game, further alleviating the load. And we have further performance improvements in testing as we speak. We also believe we fixed the database reconnect storms we were seeing because we didn't see it occur on Tuesday. Then Tuesday, we hit another concurrent player high with a few hundreds of thousands of players in one region alone. This made us hit another incident of degraded database performance, the cause of which is currently being worked on by our database engineers. We also reached out to other engineers around Blizzard to work on smaller fixes as our own team focused on the core server issues. And we reached out to our third party partners for assistance as well. Why is this happening? In staying true to the original game, we kept a lot of legacy code. However, one legacy service in particular is struggling to keep up with the modern player behavior. This service, with some upgrades from the original, handles critical pieces of game functionality, namely game creation and joining, updating and reading, filtering game lists, verifying game server health, and reading characters from the database to ensure your character can participate in whatever it is you're filtering for. Importantly, the, ser the service is a singleton, which means we can only run one instance of it in order to ensure all players are seeing the most up-to-date and correct game list at all times. We did opt optimize this service in many ways to conform to more modern technology, but as we previously mentioned, a lot of our issues stem from game creation. We mentioned modern player behavior because it's an interesting point to think about. In 2001, there wasn't nearly as much content on the internet about how to play Diablo 3 correctly, like bail runs for XP, Pindle ancient sewers for magic find. Today, however, a new player can look up any number of amazing content creators who teach them how to play the game in different ways, many of them including lots of database load in the form of creating, loading, and destroying games in quick succession. Though we did foresee this, with players making fresh characters on the server, working hard to get their magic finding items, we vastly underestimated the scope we derived from beta testing. Additionally, overall, we were saving too often to the global database. There is no need to do this as often as we were. We should really be saving you to the regional database and only saving you to the global database when we need to unlock you. This is one of the mitigations that we had put in place. Right now, we are writing code to change how we do this entirely, so we will almost never be saving to the global database, which will significantly reduce the load on that server. But that is an architecture redesign and will take some time to build, test, and implement. A note about progression loss. The progress loss some players have experienced is due to the way we do character locks both in the regional and global databases. We lock your character in the global database when you, are reassi when you are assigned to a region. For example, when you play in the U.S. region, <clears throat> your character is locked to the U.S. region, and most actions are resolved in the U.S. region's database. The problem was that during a server outage, when the database was falling over, a number of characters were becoming stuck in the regional databases, and we have no way of moving them over to the global database. At that time, we believed we had two options. We either unlock everyone with unsaved changes in the global database, therefore losing some progress due to an overwrite that would occur, or we bring the game down entirely for an indeterminate amount of time and run a script to write regional data to the global database. 
At the time we acted on the former, we felt it was most important to keep the game up so people could play, rather than take the game down for a long period of time to restore the data. We are deeply sorry to any players who lost important progress or valuable items. As players ourselves, we know the sting of a rollback and feel it deeply. Moving forward, we believe we have a way to restore characters that doesn't lead to any significant data loss. It should be limited to several minutes of loss, if any, in the event of a server crash. This is better, but still not good enough in our eyes. So what are we doing about it? Rate limiting. We're limiting the number of operations to the database around creating and joining games, and we know this is being felt by a lot of you. For example, for those of you doing Pindle skin runs, you'll be in and out of the game and creating a new one within 20 seconds. In this case, you will be rate limited at a point. When this occurs, the error message will say there is an issue communicating with game servers. This is not an indicator that the game servers are down in this particular instance. It just means you have been rate limited to reduce load temporarily on the database in the interest of keeping the game running. We can assure you this is just mitigation for now. We do not see this as a long-term fix. Login queue creation. The past weekend was a series of problems, not the same problem over and over again. Due to a revitalized player base, the addition of multiple platforms and other problems associated with scaling, we may continue to run into small problems. To diagnose and address them swiftly, we need to make sure the herding large number of players logging in simultaneously stops. To address this, we have people working on a login queue, much like you may have experienced in World of Warcraft. This will keep the population at a safe level we have at the time so we can monitor where the system is straining and address it before it brings down the game entirely. Each time we fix a strain, we'll be able to increase the population caps. This login queue has already been partially implemented on the back end. Right now it looks like a failed authentication in the client and should be fully deployed in the coming days on PC with console to follow after. Breaking out critical pieces of functionality into smaller services. This work is both partially in progress for things we can tackle in less than a day. Some have been completed already this week and also planned for larger projects like new microservices, for example, a gameless service that is only responsible for providing the game list to players. One critical functionality has been broken down. We can look into scaling up our game management services, which will reduce the amount of load. We have people working incredibly hard to manage incidents in real time, diagnosing issues and implementing fixes, not just on the D2R team, but across Blizzard. This game means so much to all of us. A lot of us on the team are lifelong D2 players. We played during its initial launch, launch back in 2001, and some are part of the modding community and so on. We can assure you that we will keep working until this game experience feels good to us, not only as developers, but as players and members of the community ourselves. Please continue to submit your feedback, report your bugs, and for your troubleshooting assistance, visit the technical support. Thank you for your ongoing communication with us across all channels. It's invaluable to us as we work on these issues. The, Di the Diablo community team will keep you updated on our progress via the forums. So some real quick instant reactions here. Again, one thing that Blizzard continually gets better about, there, there, we would have never gotten a post like this several years ago that will literally take you through day by day by day that actually explains to you what happened to them, it, it would have just never happened. Another thing that, they, that Blizzard historically has strayed away from is instead of talking about like touchy subjects like, well, we have two shitty choices. We either roll back your character or we take down the servers for a long time to fix it. You know, they'll actually tell you, well, we have these two bad choices and well, we made this decision, which by the way, um, I would have made the same decision. I would say, get the servers back up. You found an ohm rune and you lost it. It's devastating to you, but it, the, 
the benefit to the masses to get back on and play when they took the day off, when they finally have time, you know, after spending time with their families, that's so critically important that they can log in and play. Some of the, you know, the lucky players are going to have to give up an ohm rune or whatever the hell it was you found. So I would have made the same decision there. Um, so the first thing is I give credit for Blizzard. I think this does a lot for reputation and brand management that they will come up here and if things went to shit they'll make they'll make a very detailed post that'll tell you exactly what they did so want to reinforce the value of this for blizzard and i want to call its attention to the community that they are doing this and they did not do it before so you definitely have to give them some credit here um a lot of people are not going to care about the technical mumbo mumbo jumbo. They're going to care about, you know, fix my game. Um, I think these, so essentially these three things here are like penalties to us, right? Can't make a game quickly. You're going to have to have a queue. I think a queue, a queue is a million times better than just random disconnects and you never know what's going on. A queue pops up in World of Warcraft. It says, you're 500th in queue. You're going to be on in 30 minutes. Guess what? Now you, you know what's going on. You have information. You can go get a pizza. You can go, you can watch, you know, Desperate Housewives, you know, whatever it is. You, you have information. You're not surprised. So I think the anger level goes down. So I think I, I'm fine with this. Go ahead. This is fine. The rate limiting, this pisses me off, but it pisses off other people more than it pisses me off. Guys, if you're only killing Pindleskin, add one more thing to your run. Add Mephisto. Add Eldrick. Add Shank. They said they're going to take it away long term. Okay, this is not the worst thing in the world. Add one more thing to your MF run. But Rax, I don't want to do that. Who cares, man? Come on. Let's, if you can, if you can get on the game and actually play, you know, we can take a 20 or 30 second penalty. I mean, don't get me wrong. It pisses me off. I kill Mephisto. I kill him too quickly. I can't make a new game. You want to know what? I kill the council members around Mephisto. Oh, I, I still, still too slow. Okay. I repair my gear and I throw my stuff in my stash and I identify. Okay. Not, now it fixes it. You know, we can deal with, I feel like we can deal with these things as they fix them. Um, so the one thing, so I guess, Part of this is good news. Part of this is essentially what, a, what the, the main thing that I take from a lot of this is they're saying, our game is way more popular than we expected it to be. Just herds of people logging in, hundreds of thousands of players. We, we beyond our expectations, I'll crash our server in addition to all the other problems that they mentioned. Um, this, this is the only thing where I am... I, in my former role, I was an actuary, right? My job literally all day was to calculate how much of something would happen based on data. Now, I'm sure there are people at Blizzard smarter than me. I'm not saying I'm smarter than Blizzard. Um, but in my role, and actually I, I, I was, at the end I was training the actuaries, as an actuary, when you're assessing how much of something is going to happen, you really can't be off by much. When you're off by a lot, it is, it's devastating, especially when you're off the wrong way. So if, you're under, if you underestimate how many people are going to log in, this happens, which to me is by far the worst scenario. When you overestimate, you lose money. But to me, that money that you lose is nothing compared to the, again, like the brand management, the reputation that you lose. That, that value, which isn't exactly like tangible, to me is far more. So the one piece in here where if I, if I was in charge, if I was the president, if I was in charge, I would say, we have got to stop underestimating. Maybe you Jay Wilson it. You br bring in your best actuary. They, they, you know, they have their F cast. They give a perfect prediction. And then you Jay Wilson it and you double it or something. 
because I am actually going to cry. I will, I will actually cry. There will be tears in my eyes if this happens in Diablo 4. If this happens in Diablo 4, I'm so excited to play, and this happens, I'm going to cry. I'm going to need a box of puffs with extra lotion uh, on hand. So that being said, it, that's the only piece in here where, you know, I just kind of shake my head. It's like, because this happens in WoW, it happens in Diablo, it happened in Diablo 3's launch, it happened in Diablo 2's launch, it happened in, it, it always happens. The actuaries say, whoever you've got in there, they say 500k are going to log in, make it 5 billion. Plan for 5 billion. And that's it. Multiply it by, you know, 200,000. And then I think we'll be safe. I think 200,000 is a good buffer, speaking from an actuary perspective. 